Mr. Young, I figured out what the webinar issue was. You did? What was it? It was I had inadvertently checked, and I only did it on two of them, the two we had issues, um, re have registr registrants um, pre-register. Oh, and so when they don't pre-register, then they can't get in. Yeah, I think it's uh, yeah, or sign in. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. Sign in before they um, come in. That's what it was. Not pre-register, but sign in. And so, if you didn't have an account, you could not do that. Okay. And so, evidently, that was the issue. All right. Good. I'm glad that's for because you. I noticed none of the others have it, and I'm not sure why I did it on those two, other yeah. than. They were the first ones I had done as a webinar. All right, well, glad that's figured out. Yeah, because, you know, they're making it mandatory starting in March. So I'm trying yeah. to go ahead and just convert everything to that. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep.
Good afternoon, Mr. Young. Michelle. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? I sound loud or not? Okay. Uh, yeah, I can hear you, uh, Commissioner May. I didn't say anything, but okay, good. Oh, I thought I heard you say something. Well, I can hear you. Let me think. Uh, uh, I don't know if I can do that yet. If I could, I wouldn't be on here doing this. <laughs> I'm in your head now. I'm in your head, man. <laughs> now, no free rent in my head. <laughs> so I've been having computer problems. So if I disappear, just keep right on going, uh, everybody. Never know what, what may happen around here. Fred wants to go back into the uh, hearing room. Michelle, I didn't see any opposition or any, well, I didn't see any difficulty. Um, do you know how long the applicant said they needed? Was it two, five minutes, 10 minutes? 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. All right, everybody's here. Good afternoon. Uh, Mr. Young, can we start the recording, please? Okay, great. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today's date is January 30th, 2023. We are convening and broadcasting this public hearing by video conferencing. My name is Anthony Hood. I'm joined by Vice Chair Miller, Commissioner May, and Commissioner Ema Moore. Also, the Office of Zoning Staff, Ms. Sharon Shellen, as well as Mr. Paul Young, who will be handling all of our virtual operations, as well as the Office of Zoning Legal Division, Mr. Dennis Liu. I will ask all others to introduce themselves at the appropriate time. The virtual public hearing notice is available on Office Zoning's website. This proceeding is being recorded by court reported platforms used are WebEx and YouTube Live. The video will be available on Office Zoning's website after the hearing. All persons planning to testify should have signed up in advance and will be called by name at the appropriate time. Excuse me. Uh, at the time of sign up, all participants will complete the oath or affirmation required by subtitle Z 48.7. Accordingly, all those listening on WebEx or by phone will be muted during the hearing, and only those who have signed up to participate or testify will be unmuted at the appropriate time. When called, please state your name before providing your testimony. When you are finished speaking, please mute your audio. If you experience difficulty accessing WebEx or with your telephone call in or have not signed up, or not signed up, then please call your o our OZ hotline number at 202-727-0789. If you wish to file written testimony or additional supporting documents during the hearing, then please be prepared to describe and discuss it at the time of your testimony. The hearing will be conducted in, the conducted in accordance with provisions of 11Z DCMR Chapter 4 as follows, preliminary matters, applicant's case, applicant has up to six minutes, I mean 60 minutes, but certainly we don't need that, I don't think, in this case tonight. Uh, the report of other government agencies, report of the Department of Transportation and Office of Planning, and then we have the report of, a of the ANC. And I think in this ANC, we have ANC 4C, and now I believe it's in 4E, so uh, 4C is also affected so as well. So the test, then we will have testimony of organizations, five minutes, individuals, three minutes, and we will hear the order from those who are in support, opposition, or undeclared. Then we'll have rebuttal and closing by the applicant. Again, the OZ hotline number is 202-727-0789 for any concerns during these proceedings. I'll just say that nobody calls me all day long and I start doing this and then I get phone calls. So that's just how it goes. At this time, I apologize. At this time, the commission will consider any preliminary matters. Does the staff have any preliminary matters? Um, just very quickly, um, the applicants being represented by Lila Batiz and Christopher Cohen of Holland and Knight. Um, as you stated, 
Um, this property is now within. A, a, sorry, got, keep muting. I'm muting myself. Um, is now within ANC 4E, and uh, Commissioner Ulysses Campbell is on and will be representing that ANC. ANC 4C is. Um, still an affected ANC per the regulations and Commissioner Brittany uh, Katie Kade Meehan, um, I'm sure I messed that one up. It has been authorized to uh, represent that ANC. Um, I don't see her yet unless she is one of the phone numbers that have called in. If she could send us a message and let us know if, if that is her. Um, other than that, um, the um, applicant, as stated, is planning to take about 10 minutes. Okay, thank you, Michelle. Let's bring everyone up. And we can go ahead and get started. I think the chairman said that they only get six minutes. <laughs> I, you, you know, like I, name I, that name that project from the old show, name that tune. So I was I was trying to cut my my phone off at the same time. So that's probably why I probably saw six and kept trying to keep reading. I don't usually make mistakes. Ms. Batiste, you've been challenged, but. <laughs> All right, Ms. Batiste, um, you may begin whenever you're ready. Try to get it done quickly. Good afternoon, everyone. Lila Batiste and Chris Cohen with Mulholland and Knight. On behalf of the applicant, Mid-Atlantic Neighborhood Development Corporation, which seeks a zoning map amendment for lots 810 through 813, in square 2819 from MU3 to MU7A. Mid-Atlantic Neighborhood Development Corporation is an affiliate of Volunteers of America and the development partner to the Xi Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. Uh, Mid-Atlantic Neighborhood Development Corporation is represented this evening by its executive director, Mike Sheedy, and the Xi Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha is represented by its president, Raymond Hill, and also Ms. Alfreda Edwards, Chair of the Xi Omega Property Redevelopment Committee, which was established in 2015. Uh, Mr. Young, if you can please pull up the map from our PowerPoint. Ms. Matisse, before we get started, let me, let me just do this. I've been around long enough to know. Uh, Ms. Edwards uh, is a friend and a neighbor of mine. We have not talked about this case. Uh, does anybody have any objections of me participating? Okay, no objections. I want to make sure I put that on the record. I've learned like 20 years ago to make sure you do that. All right, so let's um let's go ahead, Ms. Batista. I'm sorry. Okay, great. Yes, Mr. Young, if you can just pull up the map of the property from our PowerPoint. So uh, Zy Omega is the owner of lot 813 and square 2819. The Zy Omega site was originally the only property covered under this application but the application was amended to include the adjacent lots 810, 811, and 812. Together, these lots total approximately 19,600 square feet. They're located on the east side of 14th Street between Allison Street to the north and Webster Street to the south, and they are bounded on the east by Arkansas Avenue. The parcels are mid-block, underutilized sites flanked by taller apartments at each end of the block. The application seeks to rezone the properties from ME3A to ME7A, which would allow the lots to be redeveloped as a matter of right at a density of 4.0 FAR or 4.8 with IZ and a maximum height of 65 feet, consistent with these parcels designation on the comprehensive plan future land use map. Their designation is mixed use, medium density residential, moderate moderate density commercial. The record is complete with great favorable reports from the Office of Planning, DDOT, ANC 4C, which was the previous ANC for the subject property, and ANC 4E, which is the current ANC for the property. The record includes an extensive comprehensive plan analysis on pages 6 through 22 of the applicant's statement at Exhibit 3 of the record, including a racial equity analysis. Uh, the Office of Planning Re Report concludes that the map amendment on balance would not be inconsistent with the comprehensive plan, particularly when viewed through a racial equity lens. 
As such, Mr. Chairman, we propose to rest on the record, um, but we would appreciate the opportunity um, for Ms. Alfreda Edwards to give remarks to the commission on behalf of Zy Omega, which has been a long-term stakeholder in this neighborhood and is the entity leading the rezoning and redevelopment of the property that's covered in the application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Ms. Edwards? Ms. Ms. Edwards, Edwards, is on, Ms. Edwards is on mute. And Ms. Edwards, before you start your testimony, and I, you know, tell us if you don't mind. I'm gonna do it like this because I, I think we, we always spread the bad stuff. I know your daughter was featured on Channel Four recently here in the city. Tell us what what she's doing nationally I can't so, hear and globally. Let Can you hear me? Back. One minute. Give me one minute. All right. Um, I can't hear you. We can hear you. Can everybody else hear me? Ms. Batiste, can y'all hear me? Everybody else can hear me? I can't hear you. Just a minute. You can't hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. And we'll incur a one cent per minute charge okay. if you continue. We can I'll hear you. Now to avoid the charge. All right. So don't get charged, but we can hear you. Welcome to WebEx. Into your access code or me. Ah. Don't get frustrated and say anything because we all can hear you. It's outside of your plan and we'll incur a one cent per minute charge if you continue. Don't talk too you long. can hang up now to avoid the charge. Enter your attendee ID number followed by pound if you do not know your attendee number. Hello. 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 Yeah, we can hear you, but we can hear you twice. You must have two things on. Okay. Let okay. me go back. Let me go back. What about now? Now, why, why don't you just, why don't you just do this? Why don't you just turn your, do it by telephone if you can hear me, just do it by phone and cut your computer off. We, we can't, we can't hear you. I'm gonna cut it off. Okay, okay. there you go. Now we can hear you. All right, so. So before you, before you get started, I don't know if you heard me. I just want you to tell us a, a little bit about your um, daughter, if you don't mind. Okay. So Mr. Hood is referring to my youngest daughter, um, Anidra Edwards, who um, was raised in Ward 5 of Washington, D.C. And so she's an avid sports player. And lacrosse was her chosen sport um, that she pursued in high school and in college. And after college, um, she decided she wanted to to do wonderful and great things. And so she entered the entertainment industry and she eventually moved to Los Angeles, California to become a visual effects editor um, in, 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 um, in, her, in the entertainment world. And so her latest um, greatest accomplishment is that um, she was the visual effects editor on Wakanda Forever, the Black Panther movie that aired in um, October and is now being, um, is now a nominee in several Oscar um, nomination categories. And though she attributes all that she knows and who she is with her upbringing in Ward 5 of Washington, D.C. and the people who are quote unquote in her village and have supported her um, throughout all of her endeavors. And so now that she's completed work on that particular feature film, she is now working on um, Transformers, Rise of the Beast. I do have to admit, I have not been a Transformers fan and followed all of the Transformers movies, but I will be attending 
um, this transformer <laughs> event when it comes out in June, simply because of my personal um, connection there. And so um, Anthony Hood has known her since, oh my gosh, since she was a little girl and watched her develop and grow into the, the person that she has become now. And so thank you, Anthony, for allowing me to acknowledge her and her accomplishments um, that she has. And, sh and um, she always attributes or makes sure that she mentioned she is from Washington, D.C. She is a product of this city in this town. So, Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Everson. And let her know that we are very proud of her. I was so happy to see her, I think, one Sunday morning on Channel 4. They did a special on her and tell her she, she's a natural. So tell her we are very <laughs> proud. All right. So with that, I'm going yeah. to get back to zoning. So, okay. All right. So go okay. ahead. I'm All sorry. right. All right, so um, as I was saying, I am um, the chairman of the redevelopment, the property redevelopment committee for Biomega. I have, um, I am a 47 year member of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. And I um, am honored to be working on this project. And then I also want to take time to acknowledge um, my president who hopefully is on the call, Ms. Raven Hill. And as was stated by Ms. Petit, this application initially only included the Zyomega parcel, but now has expanded to include the three adjacent parcels. So let me just tell you a little bit about Zyomega chapter. In December of this year, Zyomega will celebrate 100 years as the oldest graduate chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority in DC. And we purchased this property back in 1981 and the um, building has served as our chapter headquarters where we implement our programs of service. Um, we align our programs of service with our mission to be a service to all mankind. And over the life of the chapter, members have conducted programs and activities that benefit the surrounding community and positively impact residents of the District of Columbia. Um, these um, programs demonstrate our strong commitment to education, health, economic disparities, and community activities, and support of families and seniors. And so some of our activities include, but are not limited to, scholarship assistance for DC public school students, health fairs and screening, consumer education, voter registration drives, and weekly senior activities, among others. And we began this journey back in 2015, when Biomega made the decision to redevelop our site. And since that time, we have taken several steps to get this part of the entitlement process, um, including hiring our real estate um, consultant partners, CSG, um, to help us understand the process for redeveloping the site. I am not an expert in real estate, but we can hire people who are. And that's what we did. We uh, composed a development proposal that advanced the mission of our um, organization and we worked with, at the time it was council member Todd in the DC office of planning to amend the comprehensive plan to support the redevelopment of this property. And we also identified a development partner, um, Mid-Atlantic Neighborhood Development Corporation, which uh, Ms. Baby has referred to, which is an affiliate of Volunteers of America. But, um, Building permits or financing um, are not yet in place, but we propose to redevelop the site as a mixed use building with 62 affordable senior um, one bedroom units over a new ground level that would also house Zyomega chapter operations. And we felt that this was an excellent public benefit and it does feed into um, plans for increasing affordable housing in the District of Columbia. And so our um, community outreach has included, you know, working with the um, comprehensive plan um, amendment and understanding that process and participating and getting those approvals in place. And we have met with representatives from um, the ANCs, as you mentioned, 4C and 4E, and we were able to secure letters of support from both of them. Um, 
people seem to be very excited about our project. And so that has been our progress to date. And now we come before you um, to get the approvals that are required through the Zoning Commission um, that I remember when Mr. Hood was elected to the Zoning Commission. Um, and I have been very proud of his work thus far. So that's our request. Do I have any questions? Thank you. We, we'll wait until you finish. We may want to hear from President Hill. Um, I don't know, Ms. Batiste, however you want to do it. President Hills wants to say something. We hear from everybody, and then we'll ask our questions at the end. Uh, we are done with our presentation to the Zoning Commission, mm -hmm. so we'd like to rest on the record. Um, that's in the case record as well as the testimony this afternoon. Okay, well, thank you very much for being very succinct. I think this record from my standpoint, what to ask for, uh, especially uh, with the comprehensive plan and what the council has amendments that you all have made. I think a lot of the legwork has been done. Uh, I know that I've heard of the AKAs. Uh, I get to hear about the Beta Delta Omega chapter in Jackson, Mississippi consistently because my aunt has two <laughs> Pearl, Pearl members. So they tell me about the Pearls. So I even know what the Pearl members mean. So uh, anyway, okay. I thank AK for all the work that they have done. And you all just had something recently here in the city. I saw it on TV. And all the great work you've done, not just nationwide, but but globally. So thank you all. And glad to have you, President uh, Hill, with us today. Let me see if my colleagues have any questions or comments about zoning or whatever they have in the case. Um, Commissioner May. Uh, do not have any questions? Thank you very much. So it seems very straightforward. Okay. Uh, Commissioner Ema Moore. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I agree with Commissioner May. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, Ms. Edwards, thank you so much uh, for being here. Uh, likewise, Ms. Hill. Hey, and Vice, Vice Chair Miller. <clears throat> thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, Batiste and Ms. Edwards for your uh, presentation and bringing this um, uh, very worthwhile uh, application uh, forward. Um, I would just associate myself with uh, Chairman Hood's uh, uh, positive remarks. Um, I may have a question for Office of Planning, I guess, about the adjacent properties and how that got included into the application, unless Ms. Batiste um, or someone else wants to go into that. But uh, yeah, I, I, had, I just had a question as, as to how that occurred and um, why certain properties in the square adjacent are included and others aren't, um, and whether the property owners know the other property owners know about this application. Um, mm -hmm. I can ask Office of Planning, unless Batiste, Batiste has information on that, or Ms. Edwards. Yes, I can answer that question, Mr. Miller. Um, the Zy Omega reached out to the adjacent property owners as, as good neighbors, explaining to them the application um, and the opportunity to upzone the site consistent with the comprehensive plan. I think ideally, like, for Office of Planning, from a planning standpoint, they are happy to see as much of this block rezoned as possible. So really, Zy Omega did, and, and their development partner really did the legwork in terms of reaching out to the adjacent property owners, getting them to sign letters of authorization to um, have their application included. As you can might imagine, they're not sophisticated developer types. So. Um, so there was a process of informing and educating the other property owners. Um, the two parcels that aren't included at, in the on the block, the two parcels that are not included, are already developed with a taller apartment building. So although they're not rezoned, they are um, much better utilized in terms of height and density than the parcels that are included in this application, which are generally just one story. Commercial retail facilities that are underutilized. Well, thank you for reaching out to your uh, neighbors um, and including them in the um, application with their consent. And um, thank you for all of your community outreach to mm -hmm. both A and C, 4C, and 4E, and all the good work in the uh, community that the uh, uh, that. Um, Sci Omega um, does um, regularly. Thank you very much. 
Okay, let's see if we uh Michelle, do we have I know we had some representatives in C uh four C and four E and, and and I know that we went through some redistricting and one of the names I noticed that went over from C to E, I believe, is uh Commissioner Campbell, which gives me a comfort level of making sure and then plus they have support letters on both sides. So I'm gonna commend this afternoon again. Uh even through that transition, uh you come out with um, a lot of support. So Michelle, let's bring them up and see if they have any cross examination of the applicant. Yes, I We've got uh, Mr. Campbell. Um, again, I have not heard from the two users, so I'm not sure who they are. Um, and I do not see um, Brittany, the other uh, ANC person that was named to represent 4C. Okay. Um, and I did try to rehearse that name and I gave up because I, I didn't want to mess it up and I couldn't even get it in rehearsal to myself. So we'll we'll see. We maybe Mr. Campbell can help us. Uh, Mr. Campbell, uh, Commissioner Campbell, you have any cross examination of what you've heard thus far? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I do not. Uh, and I'm, I just want to uh, let the panel know, I am trying to figure out how to enable my camera and uh, very much want to do that because I put on a jacket and a tie to attend the proceeding. <laughs> <laughs> and it's kind of wasted <laughs> if I can't let you all see me. <laughs> so hover over where it says, do you see something that says mute and then video or unmute? Yes. To stop your video or yeah. start your video. Well, yeah, now I hit that, but it said that I was going to have to go to settings to enable um, the function to allow the camera. So this isn't just as cut and dried as me hitting this thing. It's, uh, right. yeah. Right. So it's anyway, nice. I'm trying to figure that out. So here's what you do. What, what, since you want, you want us to see your tie, let me ask you this. Is your tie and your jacket matching or does it look like what I do sometime and it's not matching? Okay, well, you'll let me know. All right, uh, and, and you call Mr. Young, he can help you with that. And so we can see your tie and your jacket. But meanwhile, we're gonna keep moving and we'll come back to you, Commissioner. We appreciate you doing that. Uh, Michelle, let's go to the reports of the uh, other, in, do we have any other government agencies who would like to testify? I do not, I am not aware of any other government agencies. And I didn't see any, uh, in particular, other than the Department of Transportation, do we have anyone from DDOT here? None of the usual folks have signed on, no. Okay. And they well, don't letter, typically for MAP amendments. Right. So the DDOT letter was supportive and asked the app to continue to have uh, continued coordination. Typically, what they do is selling state in the MAP amendment. Now, let's go to the Office of Planning. And meanwhile, let's try to get Ms. Uh, Commissioner Campbell straight so he can come on. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm Steve Cochran for the Office of Planning. On this case, um, I was kind of hoping that my audio wouldn't be uh, visible either, so I could convince you that I have dark brown hair and I'm 30 years old. In any event, um, OP is recommending that the Commission approve the request uh, to rezone Square 2819 lots 810 to 813 from MU3A to MU7A and to make any uh, future residential development on the property subject to IZ+. OP reports uh, in the past and its set down testimony discussed why such an action would be not inconsistent with the comprehensive plan, particularly when it's viewed through the racial equity lens. Uh, the 2021 comp plan amendments, which implemented the central 14th streets, uh, small area plan changed the sites land use designation from moderate density, residential and commercial low density to medium density, residential and moderate density to commercial. And the policy map indicates that the mixed use nature of that part of 14th street should be maintained. Both the sites previous and uh, current ANCs have filed letters of support for the application. DDOT has no objection. Uh, there's no opposition to the proposed case in the uh, case file. So that concludes OP's report, but I'm of course happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Mr. Cochran. Uh, let's finish up with OP and then we'll go back to Commissioner Campbell. We'll do it all with Commissioner Campbell after we finish with OP. We'll get to you, Commissioner Shortman. Um, any questions or comments of OP, uh, Commissioner May? Okay, Commissioner Emamore. I do not. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cochran, and I do believe you are clerk here. So. All right, and, and Vice Chair Miller. Uh, 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, uh, Mr. Cochran, for your report and presentation. Um, so, uh, do you have any comment on the question I asked um, Ms. Batiste about the adjacent parcels um, that were, three of them, I guess, were in included that have uh, okay. one story, but the, the the two apartment buildings on either and were not included, even though they were part of the square that had the comprehensive plan map change, like, like these other parcels. Uh, so I just wanted to get your perspective on that. Be happy to try. Um, originally, this case uh, was assigned to someone who um, is now working much closer to Ms. Batiste uh, than I am. Um, having, she's left the Office of Planning. Um, it's my understanding that OP, uh, for the sake of good planning, uh, wanted to have more than just one property uh, brought up to the kind of zoning that would be con uh, consistent with the new uh, amended comprehensive plan. And as Ms. Batiste said, it's again my understanding that um, because the other buildings are 40 to 45 feet high and are already all residential, uh, there was no need to necessarily include them in uh, this application. Um, well, thank you for that response. Would, would those buildings be conforming to the if if, if new zoning were applied to those to those uh, parcels? Would those bu existing buildings be in conformity with the MU seven uh, A proposed right. zoning? Their height would be. I'm not sure about their lot occupancy. I don't know whether they exceed 75% of the uh, maximum. Uh, you know, that's the, the maximum lot occupancy is 70% for uh, a building that doesn't have IZ and, and 70, 80%, uh, excuse me, it's 75% for a building that doesn't have a IZ and 80% uh, for one that does in the new zone. So for all intents and purposes, it would appear as if the buildings would. I'm just getting down to the nitty gritty and saying I can't guarantee they would on lot occupancy. Right. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Matisse, does Abigail have any questions of the Office of Planning? I have no questions, but I would like to note one thing. Uh, Mr. Cochran noted that um, the property or redevelopment of the property would be subject to IZ+. Plus. The applicant has no, we have no objection to that, but the intent is to develop an all affordable um, building, which would be exempt from IZ altogether. So the building, I mean. If I might, I just, I uh, want to emphasize that it's a map amendment. OP has, to my knowledge, not seen any kind of a development proposal for the site. Uh, our understanding is uh, uh, not inconsistent with what um, uh, Ms. Edwards uh, said uh, for their intent on the building, but this doesn't review a particular building. So as far as the map amendment goes, we would like to see IZ plus applied. If uh, an all affordable project develops, then it's that would be exempt. Yes, thank you. That's consistent with. Okay, and, and that can be taken care of. But as Mr. Cochran said, we we're not necessarily here to talk about any particular projects. We're here talking about a map amendment, uh, which as he will apply, and, and I'm sure other things can work out as we move forward. We're, let's not we're not gonna get hung up on that. That that's an easy fix. One of the easiest fixes I've, I've seen. Uh, Commissioner uh, Cameron, do you have any questions of Officer Plan? I do not. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, so with that, um, I think we've finished everything. So we will go first to Commissioner Campbell. Uh, first, let me uh, welcome you, and I'm glad you got your camera. On. I want you to know that tie does match the jacket. <laughs> the other thing is, I don't know if you could help us with the other young lady's name. Michelle and I have. Well, I've been working hard trying to pronounce it, and if you could help us, she's in the other A and C. Yeah, if you I, could help us with the pronunciation. I, I sure hope I can. Uh, I have been calling her Brittany Cadmian, and nobody has uh, challenged that, so that's what I'm going with. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. So thank you, Commissioner, and and welcome. You can give us your report. Thank you. 
Um, so we have uh, letters of support from ANC 4E and 4C in the record. Uh, of course, ANC both have voted to support the MAP amendment. Uh, I previously served on ANC 4C, which was the ANC in which the subject property was located until the recent redistricting. And um, ANC 4C remains in effect at ANC as it is located directly across the street. Um, ANC 4C had supported both the initial ap application as well as the amended application, which includes immediately adjacent property to the north. Uh, ANC 4E notes that the Office of Planning set down report has determined the application to be not inconsistent with the comprehensive plan and the small area plan. The ANC also notes that there are two apartment buildings in the immediate vicinity of the subject property, a five-story building to the north and a four-story building to the south. An especially compelling element that is peripheral to the application is the applicant's expressed desire to develop the property into affordable senior housing. And although the development is not an element of this application, it was a major factor in garnering support for this MAP amendment. Um, the application being granted would allow development at greater density as a matter of right. And while the applicant is under no obligation to adhere to this plan, the ANC sincerely hopes that the AKA Xi Omega chapter follows through with the plan should the Zoning Commission grant the application. Uh, there remains resistance on the part of some members of the community to greater density in the neighborhood, and the development of affordable housing for seniors is a potent incentive for broader community support. Uh, the ANC uh, and uh, I, as the SND Commissioner, do want to acknowledge the stellar reputation of Xi Omega and the AKA sorority in the neighborhood, even though uh, all of my people are Delta Sigma Theta. All right, uh, thank you, Commissioner Campbell. Uh, and normally I, I usually ask, uh, I know when the fraternities come, I always ask for certain things, but um, different um, dances and stuff, but I'm not gonna do that because they, the answer I always get back is they're very business-like, so I won't even ask that here. Um, any questions of Commissioner Campbell? Um, let's go to Commissioner May. Uh, Commissioner Emma Moore. No, Commissioner Campbell, that is a dapper suit and tie, sir. Thank you. Uh, Vice Chair Miller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Campbell, for uh, your report and for your work in the community. Thank you. Ms. Matisse, any questions of Commissioner Campbell? No, thank you. And that's it. Am I leaving? But no, that's it. Okay, uh, Commissioner, we appreciate everything. Appreciate all the time and always your thoughtful testimony. We greatly appreciate it. And good luck in the new ANC, even though I know you didn't move, but the ANC boundaries did. So, indeed. All right. Thank take you. Care. All right. Thank you, Miss Michelle. Do we have any um, persons who are here in support, opposition, or undeclared? But you know, before I do that. Uh, president Hill, do you have anything you want to say? Because I, you know, you're the president, so I, I want to be respectful. Well, thank you, Mr. Hood, and thank you to the members of the commission for your positive comments on the work that we do in the community. We are extremely proud of our service legacy here in Washington, D.C., and really view our redevelopment project as an extension of the work we do to uplift families of all ages. So just thank you for your support over the years, and we look forward to working with you. Great, thank you. All right, Michelle, do we have anyone here who's in support, opposition, or undeclared on the line who'd like to testify? And before I forget, no, no one else. I have to do stuff before I forget. Before I forget, I want to also welcome back Miss Ella Ackerman, uh, who, who's a part of our staff. She makes a difference that makes a difference. So welcome back, Miss Ms. Ackerman. Uh, I'm sorry, Michelle. We that's it. That's it. Okay, Miss Batiste. Uh, do you have any rebuttal? Or I know you don't have any rebuttal. Do you have any closing? No, nothing further, Mr. Chair. We respectfully request the commission take the preliminary action and in, in support of the project, proposed action in support of the application. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And I want to thank, first of all, everyone for all the work you've done. And these are the cases that, that we enjoy. We're up to the task for the other ones that we get, but we're up to, uh, these are the ones we enjoy where everybody's got a, a common theme. Everybody's working together for uh, for a goal. 
and there's some things in collaborating with the neighborhood and the applicant, and in this uh, case, the sorority and everybody involved. So thank you for everybody who's done the work to make our jobs a little easier. So uh, colleagues, you've heard the request before, so let me open it up to my colleagues. I've done enough talking and see what your pleasure is. I think we should take proposed action tonight. Okay, hey, any objections? All right, uh, Commissioner, may you have everything handy? Would you like to make the motion? Oh my goodness, uh, do I have it handy? Let's see. No, Not I really. Can't do that. <laughs> okay, I can. I can get it. I can do. I can do it if you just give me a second. Sure, sure. All right. So uh, I would um, make a motion that we take a proposed action to approve uh, zoning commission case twenty two twelve. Uh, application to rezone uh, lots from MU 3A to MU 7A. Uh, this is at lots 810, 812, sorry, 810, 811, 812, and 813 in square 2819. Uh, Can I get a with, second? With IC Plus. Yep, IC Plus. Can I get a second? Second. second. Moved and probably second. Any further discussion? Not hearing it. Michelle, would you do a roll call vote, please? Yes. Commissioner May? Yes. Commissioner Imamora? Yes. Commissioner Hood? Yes. Commissioner Miller? Yes. The vote's four to zero to one to approve proposed action in zoning commission case number 22-12, the minus one being the third mayoral appointee position, which is vacant. And that was including the IZ plus. Thank you. Sir, do we have anything else? Anything else before us? No, sir. Okay, I want to thank each and every one. Before I do that, though, I want to um, say that the zoning commission will meet again, and Michelle, and make sure I think the next meeting we have is a meeting uh, on February the 9th. Is that correct? On various agenda items. That is correct. Okay. All right. So, and we'll be meeting on these same platforms February 9th at 4 p.m. on these same platforms. Again, I want to thank each and every one of you for your participation in this case tonight. And with that, and, and Ms. Edwards, make sure you tell a young lady we said hello. And I know you probably can't hear me, but tell us if we said hello and we're looking forward to bigger things from her. So anyway, I'll keep an eye on it. Tell us, stay on TV, keep us all impressed. So anyway, thank you. So with that, this hearing is adjourned. Good night and thank you for all the work you all did. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.